Second John verse 3, Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. Last time we did the study on part 17, we did on grace. Now, this time we're going to pick up lesson number 18, mercy. And according to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, there are nine entries. The same number as the fruit of the Spirit, or nine fruits of the Spirit. Mildness or tenderness of heart which disposes a person to overlook injury, injury, yeah, injuries or to treat an offender better than he deserves. The disposition that tempers justice and induces an injured, injured person to forgive trespasses and injuries and to forbear punishment or inflict less than law or justice will warrant. In this sense, there is perhaps no word in our language precisely synonymous with mercy. That which comes nearest to it is grace. There's a bunch more into that verse that you can read. And it's amazing how in the 1828 dictionary, Webster's, you have Bible references. And the reference here is Numbers 14. Definition number two, an act or exercise of mercy or favor it is a mercy that they escaped. I am not worthy of the least of all thy mercy. Genesis 32. What the dictionary says today. Number three, pity, compassion manifested toward a person in distress. And he said, he that shows mercy on him, Luke 10. Verse 4, clemency and bounty, mercy and truth, preserve the king, and his throne is upheld by mercy, Proverbs 28. He even quotes the verse. Number 5, charity or the duties of charity, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, Matthew 9. Number 6, grace, favor, 1 Corinthians 7, Jude 2. Number seven, eternal life, the fruit of mercy. I wonder if that one's in today's dictionary in Webster's. Eternal life, the fruit of mercy. Second Timothy one. I wonder if the doubt the verses are there. Number eight, pardon. I cry. The mercy with all my heart. Number nine, the act of sparing, or the forbearance of a violent act expected the prisoner cried for mercy to be or to lie at the mercy of to have no means of self-defense but to be dependent for safety on the mercy or compassion of another or in the power of that which is irresistible as to be at the mercy of a foe or of the waves so that is the definition of mercy And one of the things when we were kids, we played a game, and once it got too, you know, hard and all that, we would cry, mercy, mercy. Now, looking at number seven, and I'll read it again. Eternal life, the fruit of mercy, 2 Timothy 1. Well, that's interesting. If we take the eternal life, go to Psalms 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. That's a great thing to have. Mercy is a wonderful thing that comes from God. Well, then we read somewhere that there is no, let me see if I can find it real quick. There was no English word. Perhaps no word in our language specifically is synonymous of mercy or with mercy. 
And Psalms 103.17 again says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. From everlasting to everlasting. Webster's definition here matches the Holy Scripture. If one could only buy an automobile that was everlasting, never mind everlasting to everlasting. So I get things that are man-made are not equal to the mercy of God. And for those that believe, oh, I can lose it, how can you lose the mercy of God when the scriptures say from everlasting to everlasting? So Psalms 103, 17 and the 1828 Webster's Dictionary supports 2 John 2. It says in 2 John 2, For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, which we studied a few weeks back, and shall be with us forever. And grace be unto you, mercy and peace. 2 John, we see the eternalness of God and the word and the blessings that we get from God. There's no way you can lose it. If you could, uh, losing it would be requirement of God to lose it, not you. If you could lose it, it's not God's, because you can't do nothing. Now, salvation is so wonderful, and we studied grace last time, and we did not deserve the free gift of God. A free gift of God. We did not deserve it. As we look upon grace and mercy, mercy is God looking over our sins because of his son Jesus Christ and his finished work on Calvary and the empty tomb you know we celebrate the birth of Jesus okay that's fine great but that's not the gospel I cling to the old rugged cross that's great but that's not the gospel I carry around my neck the cross. That's great. That's not the gospel. The finished work of Christ was Calvary, being buried, and three days later, the empty tomb. That is the gospel. All according to scriptures, Paul says. We obtain favor from God. We do not get what we deserve. We deserve hell. We deserve to die and to burn in hell and to be cast in the lake of fire for all eternity. Because we don't put God in the right spot, in the right position. Never. Never mind the Ten Commandments. We can't even get by the First Commandment. And the first commandment is God first, first, all the time. Even I have failed. And when you fail number one, you fail number two when you put idolatry in images. I've had a study, and may I go into it again, break it down again, the Ten Commandments. If you fail at one commandment, you fail at two. If you fail at two commandments, you fail at three. If you fail at three commandments, you're going to fail at four. And then I have a study for the, for the crowns that the Christian gets at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. And the thing is, if you get one crown, you'll get two. If you get the two crowns, you'll get three. There's only one crown that everybody's not going to get, and that's the crown given to the Christian workers as far as the pastor and the, mis and the missionary and the evangelist. But then again, if you look at the evangelist, if you go in all the world and preach the gospel in, in, in your neighborhood, well, that's not our study now. Everything was placed upon Jesus Christ. You've got that one sin that Jesus didn't pay for? Listen, a uh, very old lady, small in stature, 
And you look at it, I mean, she just looks like, you know, grandma with apple pie, sweet as could be, love her grandchildren. And that woman says, there's no way God could forgive the sin I did. And you look at that woman like, what on earth could this woman do that she is so vile that God could not save her? But the mercy is that God placed it all upon Jesus. And not only that, the Bible says it is everlasting to everlasting. The mercy of Psalms 103.17. And children's children, are you a soul winner? Paul called Timothy his, his son in the Lord. You can, you can give mercy of God to somebody by giving them the gospel. And they become your spiritual child. You may have failed at the physical children God's given you, but listen, you can do well by doing what God tells you to do, going out there and trying to win souls, and those spiritual children that you get, raise them up in the Lord. Because they have already trusted Christ as their Savior to be your spiritual child. Raise them up. Forget the others. Listen, nobody wants God's mercy. Nobody wants God's grace. Leave them by the wayside. Not only that, the Bible it says it's everlasting, everlasting, that Christ bore the punishment of our sins and not us. That is for the, that is for the whole world, but that, are, that is for those that are saved. He said, well, Christ died for everybody. That's true. His sins were, were born for us. But what do you do with a man that does not receive Christ? God will place all his sins on that person rather than Jesus into the lake of fire, Revelation 20. You better have your sins upon Christ and not upon self. It is the mercy, it is the grace, it is God and the God of forever God is forever so it comes down to this you can have your sins either one or two places you can have them upon Jesus Christ or you can have them upon yourself mercy withholds what we really deserve h-e-l-l -L. hell hell not Hades. That's only a preacher air conditioning the place that he's going to. Okay? We don't want to offend the people. Not only do we not get what we deserve, but look at what God gives us when we don't deserve it. He gives us glory. He gives us eternal rest. To be with him, to be in his family, to live among the angels, New Jerusalem, on and on, crown, cherubim, on and on. Why? I'm going to get a new body one day. I won't have these ear infections. I won't have the, these, these teeth problems. I won't have allergy problems. I won't get the flu no more. Why? I look at my hands and feet, you know what? They're getting old. They're getting wrinkly. They're getting shriveled up. My body cracks. My body aches. I'm going to get a new body. Why? Mercy. How come? Jesus Christ. Scripture, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. 276 times mercy is in the Bible. Three times in James 2.13. Let's go look at James 2.13. Just to see. James 2.13. You find the word mercy three times. James 2.13. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that he shewed 
but showed no mercy, and mercy rejoice, rejoices against judgment. If there's one thing you do not want in your life is for God not to show you mercy. And then rejoices. Mercy will rejoice when you are judged. You are righteous, God, for throwing that man into hell after what you did through Jesus Christ. Two hundred and eight Old Testament verses. Fifty three New Testament verses. And in the book of Psalms, ninety nine verses about mercy. Exodus, twenty verses. Isaiah, ten verses. Psalm book. Your hymnal in the Bible that the Holy Spirit gives us, 99 verses. Exodus, the children of Israel were in bondage for two chapters, and, and then uh, all the, the, the plagues and all that went on through Exodus into Egypt. They were treated miserably. God plagues the land to, 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 for the land to throw them out. And God calls them out, and 20 verses of Exodus, you find the mercy. Now, mercy is first found in Genesis 1919. 19. We'll go there. I've got it. I got it written here, so I'll read it. But Genesis 1919. 19. And just a side note, you can get a copy of this through Sermon uh, Network. There's a link. You can email me. I can send you a link that you can print this. This is not copyrighted. It's free. I'll send you the link. You can print it or, or read along. Genesis 19, 19. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy. That's an interesting verse, but let's go to it. Let's see what the contents is. 19, 19. Oh, okay. Genesis 19, 19. It's locked. It's Lot that's proclaiming, Behold, now thy servant has found grace in thy sight. For what? The destruction is coming to Sodom and Gomorrah. He gets grace from judgment. And thou hast magnified thy mercy. Now, according to 2 Peter 2.7, Peter says that Lot was just. He was just a worldly sinner. But he was just. He was in the wrong place. But he was just. And here in Genesis, he receives mercy from the angels of God. How's that? You know, a backsliding Christian can get mercy? Mercy to get back? To where you were? Now that doesn't happen a lot. He ends up in a cave. Last thing you hear about Lot, even though he's just incensed and, and, and drunken. But here he has a chance. God is about to order these angels to destroy Sodom, which is Lot's home. Grace, I mean, excuse me, mercy. Allowed Lot to get out from the judgment. You know what mercy does for a Christian? You do not show up at Revelation 20. You will not be at the great white throne judgment. Like Noah, only his family got out before the judgment fell. 
So mercy fell upon Noah and his seven family members and all the animals. Mercy was in the ark that God allowed those animals to go in there so the world would be populated. He said the, the clean animals by seven that we will have food later on when God allowed man to eat meat. Do you know the very fact is that you can eat chicken and pork today was the mercy of the ark? What if God just told Noah get in a boat and don't bring nothing? Well, the mercy of Noah would have been he'd been a vegetarian still today. And there would be no animals. Lot lived in Sodom. And what made him any different? Of all the people in Sodom, what was different about Lot? God's grace. God's mercy. No one else in Sodom got the grace and mercy that Lot got. No one in the world of Noah's time got the God's grace or mercy that Noah got. No one. When the Lord will call his church home, and those that are raptured out, how are you raptured? God's grace and God's mercy. And everybody else will be left behind. Like Noah and like Lot. As in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, those who do not get God's grace and mercy are left behind to die in judgment, water and in fire. The Antichrist will be the judgment. And then you'll get cast in the lake of fire. Matthew 5, 7. Matthew 5, 7 is the first New Testament place that mercy shows up. Matthew 5, 7. They call this thing, I don't go with big words. It's a Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you big words that you don't even know. Big words is so some college can charge you outrageous money so they can have a Coke machine and air conditioned office while they sit there and change the word of God and cheat on their wives. And look how much I know. Blow up their heads. Yes, I say it. And I sign my name to it. What Find me one big, long word that Jesus ever used. You morons out there. Five, seven. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Reaping what you sow. Oh, Lord, I want mercy. Do you show mercy? Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever a man soweth, that ye shall also reap. Judge not me, ye be judged. Have you followed Matthew 7 2? Let's read that, Matthew 7 2, okay? I get sick and tired of people going, Judge not me, ye be judged. And you know, you know the rest of it, you know, you know where it is. Matthew 7 2. Well, let's read 7 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you. If you don't show no mercy, God's not going to show you no mercy. There's a man in the Bible. The, his, his, his lordship forgave him a vast amount of money. He ran out and somebody owed him a dollar. And he, hey, put him in jail. I want my dollar. He didn't... He was just forgiven a big debt of money. He walked up to somebody with, with a little debt, and he forces him into jail. He didn't show no mercy like the Lordship showed him mercy. So what happened at the end of the story? He lost the mercy. And the Lordship put him in jail until he paid all. He better be careful how you treat others because God will treat you. That's mercy. 
will give out mercy to others if you give mercy out to them. And you don't do it to be saved. Well, I'm going to, for, you know, so I can go to heaven. No. Absolutely not. You do it because you are saved. You do it to show to what mercy is. After all, mercy is what saved you. God saved you from all your sins, right? I'm going to let my light shine. It's a merciful light. But I'm not going to tell them about Jesus. That's not mercy. Because the source of mercy, the source of the light is Jesus. And you ain't going to tell them nothing if you don't open that big fat mouth. Well, with a mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Not your light. Not your life. <clears throat> the last place mercy shows up in the Bible. Kind of interesting. Where would you think the last place mercy would show up? You know a place it does not show up? Revelation. You don't find no mercy in Revelation. And how short do you come up? You go to Jude. <clears throat> Jude 21. We found mercy in Genesis, the first book. We found mercy in Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. But we don't see mercy in Revelation. The last place that mercy shows up, Jude 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Looking for mercy from our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to seek. It comes from God. It comes from Jesus Christ. God and Jesus Christ are one. Even though the Jehovah Witnesses say they're not. I say that because the rest, when we get to the end, you know, rest of this book. We're going to rebuke some religions, and one of them is the Jehovah Witnesses. The Jehovah Witnesses say that God and Jesus are not one. And if you can say you're a Christian and get involved in that outfit, that is blasphemy. Because we are talking about mercy, and mercy in Jude says, God, who is love, and from Jesus Christ. So, excuse me. <clears throat> if Jesus Christ and God are one, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. God and Jesus Christ are one. That means love and mercy are together. They are a pair, just like God and Jesus are a pair. They are the source of mercy. An unsaved man cannot show you mercy then. And we've talked about before through Second John, if you're not saved, you don't have an idea what love is, because love is of God. Love is God. No unsaved man knows what love is. Unless he knows God. Unless he truly lives John 3.16. Everlasting eternal mercy. And oh how the Father and the Son are one. But what do you do find? 
Go to Revelation 22. When it's all over, Revelation 22, verse 21, the last verse in the Bible. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. There's grace in Revelation, but no mercy. You know, once you get to chapter 4 in Revelation, the church is gone. And it don't come back to Jesus comes back. From Revelation 4 to Revelation 19, it's all about the Antichrist, Satan, the devil. Do you know you will not find mercy and grace at all? Never with Satan. Absolutely not. And grace, well, the mercy, uh, the grace returns with the Lord Jesus Christ in eternity. Mercy in eternity has already been dealt with. Judgment is over in Revelation 20. There is no mercy in New Jerusalem. It's all on upon Jesus Christ. Those who will not receive Jesus are in the lake of fire. What will we need mercy in New Jerusalem? We are sinless, or will be sinless. I'm talking present. Grace is the praise that we are there. So, going back to the definition real quick. Verse uh, number 7 in the 1828 dictionary, eternal life. Okay, that will be New Jerusalem as far as that mercy. But look at the first definition again. Mildness or tenderness of heart which disposes a person to overlook injury. To treat a offender better than he deserves. There is no more judgment. It's done in New Jerusalem. Mercy will turn into eternal life. After all the judgment. There are some people at the great white throne judgment that will go to heaven. If their name is found in a book, they will not go into the lake of fire. That is mercy. That is favor. But one day, according to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, number seven, mercy will be eternal life with the grace of Jesus Christ and God the Father. I tell you what what a hallelujah amen glory to God and you know God has to give us a new body now Lord willing next time let me take a look here what will we do next time Lord willing we will look at peace peace have you got the grace and mercy of God are you joyful have you been overlooked your sins by Jesus Christ are you washed in the blood of the Lamb if you don't have the grace you don't have the mercy you do not have peace verse 3 says from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ That is salvation. That is, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. There's the mercy. The grace is that he gave Jesus Christ. We'll close there.
Yeah. 